Good afternoon. Welcome to the final session of Unite Copenhagen. Has everyone had a good week? <laughs> good. Seen some amazing things? Good. We have one more to show you. I've lost my clicker. Just oh. <laughs> How about now? It says it's on. There we go. Apologies for the interruption. We'll be discussing how Unity and Google Cloud Platform work together to run simulations in the cloud. My name is Stephen Curly. I'm the development manager for C Unity Simulation. Today I'm joined by Mo C. Mo? Thank you, Stephen. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Mo C. I'm a customer engineer with Google Cloud. I focus primarily with uh, working with Unity technologies directly. In my day to day, I work with the different Unity engineering and product teams to ship all the products across verticals and across different Unity subsidiaries. Some of the projects my team and I at Google Cloud have worked on this year has been the launch of Apex Legends, taking it from zero players to 50 million players globally. We also got to work on the dynamic streaming, which you guys have probably seen with all the automotive and Unity streaming workloads. And I'm typically known for also being a part-time Hawaiian shirt enthusiast. That makes me pretty easy to find at conferences, so you're always welcome to find me, ask me a few questions. And today, the last thing we're gonna really talk about is a simulation product that Unity launched at the beginning of the week. We're going to, have to give a little bit of overview of it and then talk about how it uses Google Cloud specifically. We're going to highlight some of, the, some of the security features as well as some of the agility and scale that you get by using that solution. So now I want to welcome back Stephen to the stage to give you the first overview, and then I'll be back a little bit later on in the session. Thanks, Mo. Let's start with what is a simulation? Simulation is the power of virtual resources to tackle real-world problems. Use virtual resources to safely and efficiently test, train, and validate real-world scenarios. Let's review a use case from the keynote. Elogica Studios want to optimize the competitive balance for one of their games. Working together, we executed over 25,000 simulation instances representing over 1,100 hours of game time. We did this in about four real-world hours, and we found several configurations to ensure a positive game experience for everyone. Simulation allows you to do more in less time. But it goes beyond games and running fast. How about autonomous vehicles? Here we have a simple scene but look at the different weather conditions, like fog and rain. Different lighting conditions, like day and night. And different traffic conditions. You can simply simulate more scenarios, both common and rare, and do it faster and safer in the virtual world than you could ever do in the real world. So how do you use Unity simulation? Start creating in Unity. This week, you have witnessed what is possible in Unity, whether it's games, robotics, engineering, automotive, or anything you can imagine, you can create it in Unity. Now we extend that power beyond the desktop and into the cloud. To get started with Unity simulation, you just need to answer two questions. First question, how many CPUs do you need? We have a curated list of options that we believe will fulfill most use cases. However, you know best what you need. We can respond to user feedback and quickly add new options. Second question, how many instances of the simulation do you need? If you just need to validate your simulation is working, start with one. If you're ready to go big, try 100 or 1,000 or more. We do start you with a reasonable maximum to guard against runaway usage. But if you know you're ready for more, just reach out to us. We can quickly increase your limit. 
Now that you have answered two simple questions, your simulation could be running in less than a minute. This is a real-time video of starting a simulation. It lasts 43 seconds. You build your executable, create your configuration, upload them to our service. Then you define your simulation, answering those two questions, and then you execute your simulation. All data generated by the simulation is persisted online. We expose that data in a CSV file. It details the execution, configuration, simulation instance and attempt, file name, and the download URL. This file can then be shared with anyone who needs access to that data. This is an example from the Rollerball tutorial, which we include in our Quick Start. If you've used Unity, you're probably familiar with this one. We've modified it so the simulation captures a set of JPEG screen captures, which we've animated here. That's Unity simulation. I'm going to turn it back over to Mo. Mo, would you let us know how Google Cloud Platform makes all that possible? Absolutely. Let's go ahead and dig in a bit. Um, but first, let's just tackle some big life questions. What's happening in the background? What are containers? What is Kubernetes? And what is the Google Kubernetes engine? And then we're going to take a look at the life of a simulation request within Unity. So first up, containers. The biggest benefit you get from using containerized application is that you get consistent deployments that can run anywhere, you get effective isolation, and you get some very big performance gains. So with a container, you can typically get your boot up time to be about 30 seconds, which when you're launching massive distributed workloads, that's just um, an incredible win. You also get a lot of visibility into all of your services, and you get a detailed accounting of what applications are running. So at Google, we deal with a lot of customers in healthcare, transportation, manufacturing, and finance that have some very strict compliance needs. Containers becomes a way where they can help kind of audit what's happening within their systems and have a reproducible supply chain. Now, when we come down to containers versus virtual machines, your typical virtual machine, you're, you are essentially abstracting away at the hypervisor layer, whereas here, you're putting your apps within the container runtime. So rather than having a guest OS, your container runtime is what runs everything, so we can run much leaner OS. These are container-optimized um, machines. So you can get rid of a lot of bloat that comes within your operating system and make sure, that your, make sure that your application only has precisely what it needs. This is very helpful from a security and compliance standpoint. As different packages get bundled into OSs, it reduces your attack surface, and it just makes it a lot easier to debug and run things. At Google, we've been running containers for over 12 years. And that means now, during that time, we now run 4 billion containers per week, 571 million containers per day, 24 million containers per hour, 6,600 containers per second. So that means that we've had to deal with a lot of the challenges of managing these things. And what makes this even more interesting is that everything at Google runs on containers. And when I say everything, I mean Gmail, web search, even Google Cloud. So everything you deploy on Google Cloud gets back into a containerized, agreement, uh, into a containerized environment. And that has been part of our key to success. And that's what allowed us to do so much more with a lot less staff and a lot less resources. But the challenge with containers is that at scale, it introduces a lot of problems. You're going to have to deal about management, networking, and security. And let's not forget about things like your day two ops, like how do you add high availability to something like that. For us, as the amount of containers that we were deploying grew more and more, we knew we needed a better way to orchestrate this and to have some sort of way to get visibility into our systems and be able to easily roll things back. And that's when we created Kubernetes. Kubernetes was meant to build this, was meant to solve this problem for us internally, but then we ultimately open sourced it and, and exported, it to, exported it to the community. So now anyone can go ahead and contribute to it. But in addition to that, we also have our managed version of it, which has our opinionated implementation of Kubernetes. It has some of our safe security defaults, which we'll talk a little bit about later. But let's just take a step back again and just dig, dig, dig into Kubernetes. The main reason why you want to use Kubernetes is that all those hard problems that we talked about two slides ago, it abstracts that away from you with a good management layer and control panel. It'll take care of scheduling. It'll take care of health checks. It'll take care of networking. 
And it'll essentially just give you a good Swiss Army knife tool and a lot of helpers to help you make better, uh, better safer decisions with your container deployments. Now, Google Kubernetes Engine, our managed platform, is built on our industry-leading performance. Um, we, have the, we, have the, we have the 30 second boot time, which, uh, which, which, no, one, which no one else can, can kind of compare with at the moment. And we can also do one million queries per second. A lot of this is because we manage that stack ourselves. Our SRE team manages that ourselves. So the benefit you get is Kubernetes without you having to do a lot of the heavy lifting in the day-to-day -day operations that come with it. On the background, we can all, you're also able to use a lot of the typical GCP services, like um, vault-based um, access control. This allows you to add a greater level of security to your applications. You're able to add auditing and logging, and logging, logging capabilities to your system with very, little, with very little work. We integrate very well into Stackdriver. And we also give you access for just general Docker support image, auto upgrade, auto scale, all with just a few clicks. So we have a full-fledged uh, UI that you can use from the web browser, but we also have APIs and SDKs that we expose to you so that you can, so that you can script things the way, the way that you would like. Simply put, GKE is the fastest and most effective way to run enterprise Kubernetes at scale, and it takes care of a lot of the administrative and operational burden that comes with it. The biggest benefit for GKE is that it has our software supply chain. That means that from, the, from source code to binary, everything is controlled, authorized, and signed by Google, which means that we have greater control as to what's going into the systems. And when we find a vulnerability, if you have not, not, um, auto node upgrades, that's something that will take care of for you. So that's helpful in the sense that you don't have to worry as much about the infrastructure. You can use what we've built and essentially just focus on building your application. And since you're using containers, you can even focus down. You don't have to worry about the whole OS side. You just focus on precisely what you need. You also get access to a lot of GCP accelerators. So you get access to, to GPUs, you get access to TPUs, you get access to local SSD. So you get access to the entire broad ecosystem of Google hardware within one simple abstraction layer. The other major benefit of Kubernetes is just the security by, the security by, um, the security by standard. Included is our identity and access, certified images, data encryption at risk and in transit, which is very critical for workloads like government workloads, healthcare, or highly, or highly regulated industries that require, that, require, that require that type of access. We also provide private clusters. So some workloads, you don't want to reach the public internet. We make it very simple for you to do that, so you can make sure that things are running internally. And while GKE runs within GCP, it still uses the open source Kubernetes, so, you, so your workloads are portable. So you could, if you wanted to, transport it to another cloud or to on-premise with very little work and very little changes. Digging a little bit deeper into, why, into what I am and RBAC does. So if you look over here, you can see how, oh, let, me, let me click over here. So you, since everything is logged into Stackdriver, you can go ahead and just set this flag, and you can see all of your clusters that currently have a status of forbidden. You can, you, can, you can list out anything that has white resources that shouldn't have white resources, and you can write more and more complex rules and um, policies as, as your company needs them. We have some defaults that we expose to you that help you show some of our best practices, but the general idea is we make it simple for you to build what you need. Another major benefit with running within GCP is you get to run within our trusted network. You get, to, you get the ability to use shared global VPCs. You get the ability to use our global load balancing, which is protected by our, which is protected by our network infrastructure, which is protected also by our, by our, overall, um, security, security, our overall security prevention group. And all these are things that get exported back to you. If you use Kubernetes by yourself, you have to manage all of that. But now, by using GKE, it's more of a shared responsibility model. The promise we make for you is that we take care of the core infrastructure, but you have to manage your particular application, and you have to manage your configuration files. You also get the benefit of having regional clusters and zonal, and zonal clusters, which allow you to distribute your workloads within a particular area or globally as well. Let's talk about auto-scaling for a little bit. It's actually dramatically simple to scale from zero nodes to n nodes. And that's really the main benefit of using GKE. It's just a simple switch. You can t it only takes you a couple seconds to actually change it within the UI. And then the real question is what your how, much your how much the boot time of your application takes. 
but generally speaking, the boot times are pretty low. We also, it's also really important to talk about container isolation. In the case of eSIM, for example, eSIM uses different node pools for every customer workload. What that means is that your, your workload will never be contaminated by someone else's, and you get that complete isolation, and you get audits and trails within that. And now let's go back into the life of, a, the life of an eSIM request. What, what, what kind of tag team this one? <laughs> okay. So you start out with the eSIM CLI, which is, which is what Steven showed a little bit earlier, and it goes right into the front-end service. Steven, can you tell us a bit about that? Sure. So on left-hand side, first thing is the front-end service. That's just our REST API into the Unity simulation. It in itself is running on Kubernetes Engine, uh, specifically GKE. When you say you want to run an execution, we take the executable you've uploaded, it gets handed off to the imaging service, we build that into a Docker image, which is stored in the uh, GCR Google Container Registry. It's then handed off to the scheduling service, also running on GKE, that takes that Docker image, the run definition that specifies what your run execution should do, and then creates a job over here on this side, which is the Unity Simulation SDK. I want to talk about, on the left-hand side over here, we have GKE. On this side over here, we have GKE. Those are completely separate clusters for some of the reasons that Mo talked about, is we want to guarantee that your simulation cannot possibly be corrupted by any bad actors in the cloud. Since everything's running on GKE, we get nice things like all the security stuff that Mo talked about, all the auto scale that Mo talked about, all the resiliency that Mo talked about. So on the left, we start getting a lot of customer load. Front end will spin up to accommodate. Imaging service will spin up to accommodate. Scheduler service will spin up to accommodate. On this right side over here, if your run execution, as we said, is one instance, you're probably only going to get one node. You come at us with 2,000, 20,000 run instances, well, we're obviously going to give you a lot more nodes. Right? This is all the power of GKE. Finally, this part over here is all, we talked about your data is persistent in the cloud, all that's on GCS. We didn't get too much into GCS, but Trust me, all your data is safe, it's encrypted at rest, separated from everybody else. 